In this video, I'm going to give a little bit of a business update of how things have been going with my Amazon FBA store. Um, and if you haven't noticed, the YouTube has been a lot of podcast style videos. Uh, so I guess you could call this one a podcast as well. So just go ahead and prep your items or put this in while you're on a run. Uh, don't really need to watch the screen or anything. You can just listen. Uh, I'll be telling some stories of some of the most profitable items I've sold over the last six months, uh, my profit breakdown for the last six months. Um, also, I'm going to be talking about a major update uh, for me, um, which has made things a lot more efficient. Um, and if you see me looking down, I have notes here because I wanted to actually come prepared for this. Um, and then also I've been thinking about how to best use profits to kind of get to the next level when it comes to profit. Um, and then another thing too is uh, there was a specific type of item I was selling maybe six, seven months ago that I no longer sell anymore. So I'll get to that eventually. Uh, but first of all, the business update for the year so far. So right now I'm recording this uh, close to the end of June. Um, so in January, uh, we were coming off of Q4. I was doing mostly FBM. Um, and the spillover from that ended up netting me 29,000 profit um, from, um, January. Uh, so that was, I think it was a little under hundred K. Um, we were doing some really high ROI stuff. Um, the next month ended up being 22 K, uh, also super, super happy with that. Uh, the next two months were quite a bit worse. Um, it was 17 K and 13 K, which is still awesome, but I was just looking to put it, um, up above 20 K and around that time, um, kind of connected to the next um, update that I'm going to talk about is that I was getting um, situated with a new prep center that I was doing FBM with. Um, so when it came to May last month, we ended up doing around 25,000 in sales. And so I was getting super sick of prepping my own items and shipping my own items. I was taking a look at um, how long everything was taking. And it was literally like 20 hours a week of prepping and shipping. Um, sometimes more, sometimes less, uh, just prepping and shipping takes a long time. And so like, that's a really hard thing to let go of. Uh, for me, I'm super proud that I was able to let go of that, uh, like emotionally, I guess. Um, and from a business perspective, because, um, it's a little bit different than an FBA prep center because, uh, with FBM, um, you're not able to remove feedback and Stella wants to say hi. Um, but basically, um, you're not able to remove feedback with FBM. So basically I was already seeing that, uh, feedback was going to be an issue with FBM, but I still knew that, um, in order to continue to maintain, um, how much profit I was going to be able to make and not spend a ton of time with it. And Stella really wants to say hi to everyone. So here she is. <laughs> she wants to swat everything, play with the webcam and everything else. Um, but literally it was just taking 20 hours a week. Um, I had to make a way to basically be able to um, prep and list my items. So I found a prep center. Um, thankfully actually met the person at Miami uh, seller conference. So that was helpful. Um, so that was a cool connection. Um, but yeah, at this point, they're probably prepping 70, 80% of my stuff. I still have a bunch of stuff that I'm still like selling through from my, my basement warehouse. Uh, but that's been so nice when it comes to getting back time. Um, and that's made it so that I can focus on sourcing a lot more. Um, it has made things a little bit lower margin because I'm having to pay, um, like it's definitely more than an FBA prep center per unit because uh, they're obviously doing more. Um, but I wanted to talk about the most profitable item that I've sold over the last six months. Um, so I don't have the numbers right now on how much it was in profit over the last six months, but in total, uh, I just looked at my ACE and profitability on this item and it's $15,700 in profit so far um, on this item. So I'll tell you the story of how I found it and kind of what it is. So um, basically it's a discontinued item. Um, it used to sell quickly when it was in stock and not discontinued, but for the last several years, it's been discontinued. <clears throat> 
And so when it comes back in stock, when somebody finds one or two or three, they usually sell pretty quickly. Um, so maybe six months before I had found a couple of these, um, and made some good profit. Basically they're usually around $400 and I was picking them up for maybe $200 and then the fees making $160, $150, whatever it is. Um, so I had sold maybe like 10 of these, um, up until now. So like, it was really good profit, but it wasn't like the most profitable item in my store by any means. Um, so I had it on a save search and I was checking my searches one day and it came up as some guy had like hundreds of these, like he had literally hundreds of them, but it was this weird situation, um, where he had them listed as used, um, like used open box. Um, and so connected to the type of item that I don't sell anymore. I was, um, this was one of those situations and those plays where it really did work out, uh, well. Um, and it actually was very profitable. Um, so basically at this point I was still FBMing. So I decided to take the gamble. Uh, the pictures, they looked like borderline whether they were new or not. Um, but I really needed to see them in person. So I bought uh, a few of them to start. And then I, um, I checked the condition of them when I received them and, um, they were like good enough to sell as new. Uh, they weren't like perfect pristine condition, but they were good enough to sell as new. And the thing about this was that, uh, at the time, the market price of this item was $400 and my buy cost was around $60. Uh, which is absolutely nuts. Um, so once I bought them, saw that this person's lot was actually like basically new and sellable in new condition, I, I bought a ton. Um, and this is connected to the update that I'm making in my business. Uh, basically, I've been trying to think of like, okay, how can I put my money to better use? Um, and in a way that's really time efficient for me, um, I've been doing a lot more long-term buys. Like I haven't been sticking to the whole, uh, buy 30 days supply worth only, um, because in this situation it was literally 600% ROI. So if I come across those 600% ROI items, um, I'm going to buy, I, I think I bought like nine, 10 months worth. Um, I purchased the whole big lot at the start, uh, in the fall and I've been slowly selling through them up until now. Um, and we still have a bit more available. The seller, I think just ran out. Um, and so of course, um, I was on the listing by myself for like three, four months selling pretty close to that 400 mark, but then two other people discovered it and the price is now down to like, uh, closer to 200. Um, but I discovered that the source is now completely out of stock. And I still have another, um, like around 40 of them. So I raised my price back up to closer to 400, just waiting for the other two people to sell out and then should be able to sell again at 400. But, um, like so far it's been 15,000 profit. Um, there've been a few returns on it for sure. Um, and we've been writing that off, but at a 50, $60 buy cost, that's been really, really good, uh, for the profit as well. So, um, yeah, that's definitely been the most profitable item of the last six months. Uh, and super thankful for that. Um, and then the next thing is, um, about how to like basically put money to work in a better way. So a couple months ago, I was really thinking about this a ton and, uh, part of me, it was like, I don't want to put more money into Amazon because, you know, most of us as Amazon sellers are a little bit wary when it comes to Amazon. Um, the last couple of months I've been at around a hundred K in sales a month. And, um, it kind of has felt like a good sweet spot of like, I don't feel super uncomfortable with how much I'm risking, especially doing FBM. Um, because if worse came to worst, I would lose my payout and then I would still have my inventory that I could liquidate on eBay or Walmart, although that would be a massive pain and 
the main loss would be the future income um, from not selling on Amazon, but um, I wouldn't like lose all of my inventory value. Um, so basically I was, I kind of wanted to di diversify and like put it into something else. So for a while I was thinking about um, this concept where uh, basically everyone has to pay property taxes. And if you don't pay your property taxes, every state has a different way of dealing with that basically. Um, some states hold auctions and you pay the back taxes and you bid up. And um, if there's not enough bidders, you can get a house at a really cheap price and go ahead and flip it. Um, so I was considering doing that. There's also tax lien investing, which is connected to that, but you basically pay off someone's taxes. And then when they come in and pay their taxes so that they can keep the house, you get a specific interest rate. Um, so basically that looked like it was going to be really easy, really low time. Um, but as I did more research, I was like, okay, this is basically the flipping houses is a whole nother business. And Stella is saying hi again. I'm gonna make sure she doesn't knock the webcam down. Um, but the tax deed investing was basically gonna be a whole nother business. And so um, I didn't really want like a whole nother business, you know? Um, the whole point was to put money to work, but then with the tax lien investing, um, it felt like it would be relatively passive but not enough of a reward um, because it still would take some time to do research uh, to make sure you're buying the right type of thing uh, to make sure that, you know, everything is right with it. Um, and then to just buy like a $700 tax lien to make like 12% is just like, like at that point I might as well just flip an Amazon item. So um so i decided against that i was thinking about domain name flipping um but then i did more research on that and discovered that they really take a long time to sell uh they it sounded really cool because literally there's hundreds and thousands of domains that expire um like every week and you can buy them for 10 to 20 bucks and sometimes sell them for hundreds or thousands of dollars to businesses who are looking to start or whoever is trying to have a domain. Um, so that seemed really high ROI, a good use of money. Um, but I think they sell too slow. And then there's also a lot more that goes into it to be really good at that. And like, you can like, understand like the traffic of a website and like, does it have an email list or is there um already branding on the website there's just a lot that goes to it um and again it feels like a whole nother business so i'm like why don't i just like invest in like what i know honestly i think i remember there was a um a, like a podcast with like graham stefan and dave ramsey and graham was asking dave like you know this is my portfolio like what would you suggest i invest in and dave's like well what like amount of knowledge do you have in like different spheres? And he's like, probably like 80% of my knowledge is real estate. So he's like, yeah, 80% of your investment then should probably be in real estate. Cause that's what you know. Uh, so for me, like I honestly have zero uh, experience in real estate. I have zero experience or very little in the whole, like, uh, like website selling space, you know, like I've, I've sold lots of stuff on Amazon. So like, why don't I just like buy deeper on certain things that are going to be really good. Like that item I was talking about before and just make really not passive income, but like very high hourly income. Um, so that's kind of like what I've landed on. Um, so that's everything is always a work in progress, but um, basically the way that I'm treating it, is I have a certain amount of money. Um, I invested about half of it, um, just went pretty hard for a couple of weeks and purchased a lot of inventory. Um, and then around half of that over the next several months, um, my virtual assistant will be purchasing stuff. Um, if we purchase stuff at 80% ROI and that stuff sells in uh, three to six months, I'll be able to continue to pay myself around um, well, I'll be able to profit um, the 20,000 that I've been trying to do. 
uh, per month and um, still have plenty to pay taxes and pay ourselves a lot and be able to save a lot um, and do it like very passively. Um, and then if I feel like sourcing on top of it, I can still do that. Uh, we're set up with the prep center. Um, but yeah, it, it feels good to be able to basically pay ourselves a ton, have very little to do in the business that I actually have to do because like the sourcing's done. Um, my VA will keep sourcing. I'll keep reviewing her leads. Um, and then besides that, I take care of, uh, and I've been doing this the last like month and a half or so I've been having like a day where I focus on admin repricing liquidation, um, and like dealing with returns. Um, so basically condensing it to like, here's five, six hours of time every week that I need to do some stuff. We're just going to keep it to that. And then the rest of the time I can source or just not be working. Um, so that's been a good change. Um, but um like a great part of it is like okay like what do i do with the time now and that's something that i'm thinking through and that's a an amazing problem to have um so i was curious last week like hmm, i wonder how much i can make if i uh were to like track how much profit um i could find sourcing books for example which is completely ridiculous to like circle back but i was just curious like could i do something that's super low margin and still make a ton of money um and like it turned out like pretty good i rediscovered how much i hate uh listing listing books is just like ridiculously boring um but scouting them's fun so if i did that long term i'd probably have to figure out listing uh because i just don't enjoy it um i think it would be pretty hard to make 10k profit a month with books uh without like just grinding at it um but I mean, to add another 10 K on top of what I'm already doing would be like really good profit. Um, but at that point it's like, I should just do eBay to Amazon. Like why do two things? Um, so I, I do want to talk about, um, the types of items that I was selling, uh, six to nine months ago that were making me a ton of money. I, I did 32,000 in profit in December. Um, selling some of these types of items, not completely all these types of items. Um, but I was doing um, not only high return rate items, but I was also doing uh, open box items in combination with that. So there would be a lot of situations and Stella saying hi to us again. Hey, Stella. Um, there'd be a lot of different situations where you could literally buy an open box router like you could see the condition that like, okay, this looks like basically new as long as I make sure it has like, it has all the cords. Um, it has the manual, um, customer's going to be happy with it. Um, and it would be like 150% ROI and it would sell extremely quickly. Like some of this stuff is like net gear routers, Motorola routers. Um, but I was having a hard time um dealing with returns on these um there'd be certain models that were like they were really profitable they'd sell and people would be like pretty happy with them and the return rate would stay pretty low um and then there would be other models where um and i discovered later that they were in categories that had an exponentially higher return rate um so of course they got returned a ton more like i think i discovered uh, router motor router modem combos, uh, had a base 23% return rate, even if everything was just, um, like the way it should be sealed from the manufacturer. Um, and so like my return rate was just like through the roof on these ones. Um, so there's just a lot of different ways that you can do eBay to Amazon. Um, and I think at that point, I was too far on the, um, it looks really good on paper. I'm just going to sell these. Um, and eventually I looked at uh, my return rate on these and I was just like, I think I'm just sick of dealing with all these returns. So now um, there's a thing on Amazon called selection guidance. Um, and basically you can look at the category that you are selling 
and it'll tell you like, okay, uh, like mobile thermal printers are 6% return rate um, or um, motor router combos are 23% um, return rate. Um, so that's something that I've been trying to do. I've been trying to keep it under 5% return rate. Um, that way um, I'm not having to like deal with hundreds and hundreds of returns every single month. Um, yeah. So that's been a lot better. My return rate is now under 15%, uh, which is a lot better. I still tend to run on a higher return rate because um, like I'm prep centering FBM items. Um, and also like, I think people are just more likely to, oh, I'm gonna give me some licks. That's funny. Um, I'm gonna put you down. I think people are more likely to return stuff when they're like, shoot, I got this in like four or five days instead of like FBA prime. Um, which I don't know why I've never thought of that. Like my return is just going to be higher doing FBM. Um, but yeah, I mean, that's basically an update. Um, probably the biggest thing is at the beginning of the year, I set a goal to do 300K in profit. Um, I'm a little short of that. Um, I really needed to be at like 23,000 profit a month average um, for, I think it was like 10 months out of the year, 30 another month and 40 in December. Um, I could still make it up. Um, I don't know how hard I'm gonna go for that because necessarily like I don't really need to. Um, and I'm, I think the biggest thing I'm trying to work on this year is like, yes, be profitable, but like, I want to enjoy my life. Like my wife and I are going to Scotland. I'm not going to stress about trying to source while I'm in Scotland. Um, so that's the update. Hope you guys enjoyed, uh, be looking out for more podcasts. Um, if you want to be on the podcast, maybe send me a message and, um, we can get you on the podcast. I'm just wanting to have conversations with other sellers. Um, who are in the trenches doing Amazon. Um, it's It's been fun having people, a couple people I've interviewed are not on social media at all. And it's fun to talk to them because they, like, they're not trying to sell you a course. Um, they literally just want to help out of the kindness of their heart. They've, um, they've been thankful to other people who have done social media. So they just want to pay it forward. So um, with that being said, have a great rest of the day and take care.